Hello, I'm Jeffrey Zonder from the Carmanos Cancer Institute in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, and I appreciate the invitation to uh, summarize our data uh, regarding a uh, BCMA by CD3 bispecific antibody REGN5458 uh, in a first in human phase one, two study in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. This is a first in human study. And uh, today uh, I'm going to be summarizing the data from the dose escalation portion of it. Uh, there's an ongoing uh, part two dose expansion, uh, which will be reported at a later time. The primary objective of this part of the study uh, was to uh, assess the safety and tolerability uh, of Regeneron 5458 and uh, assess for dose limiting toxicity. Uh, and to determine the recommended phase two dose uh, for the dose expansion. Secondary endpoints uh, or objectives included uh, determination of the objective response rate, duration of response, progression-free survival, minimal residual disease status, and overall survival. Uh, eligible patients for this study uh, had to have had uh, three or more lines of therapy, which included an IMID and a proteasome inhibitor uh, and an anti-CD38 antibody, or be double refractory to an IMID and a proteasome inhibitor and then progressed on or after an anti-CD38 antibody. Uh, Non-secretory patients were allowed on this study for the um, dose escalation portion. Uh, what you can see here on this slide is that we uh, tested doses uh, uh, for, uh, ranging from three milligrams all the way up to 800 milligrams. Uh, we used a modified four plus three design uh, and uh, the drug was, in, the antibody was uh, administered intravenously uh, with step up dosing in weeks one and two, and then the full nominal dose starting in week three, uh, all the way through week 16. After week 16, uh, a, uh, every two week schedule was used. Um, dose limiting toxicities were seen in two patients. Uh, one at the 24 milligram cohort and one at the 96 milligram cohort, but an MTD wasn't reached. Um, in terms of potential ICANS events, no grade three ICANS events were reported and only three patients, which is 4% of the patients in the study, uh, had a possible grade two uh, level um, ICANS event. Um, uh, five patients total um, died on this uh, study. Um, all of them were infectious related or infection related. There were three episodes of sepsis, one case of COVID and one pneumonia. Um, the, um, none of the patients were neutropenic at the time of these infections um, and the investigators uh, in each case did not uh, assess the infection to be likely related to the um, uh, antibody therapy. Uh, we can see here on this table uh, that uh, most grade three, four hematologic, I'm sorry, mo uh, that most grade three, four treatment emergent adverse events uh, uh, were uh, hematologic in nature. Um, uh, uh, the uh, incidence of grade three, four neutropenia was actually relatively low uh, with only seven and 15% of patients having grade three or four neutropenia. Uh, likewise, uh, the incidence of uh, grade three, four thrombocytopenia was also quite low. Uh, Non-hematologic uh, treatment emergent adverse events uh, uh, are listed here and um, in all cases they were uh, grade three or less. In terms of cytokine release syndrome, um, the majority of patients did not develop CRS uh, and in the uh, patients who did, um, the majority of events were grade one with just a few grade two events. Um, there were no grade three or higher cytokine release events and these uh, uh, events uh, uh, were by far the most common during the first two weeks of uh, treatment uh, during the step-up dosing. Uh, there was, uh, as we can see from this um, bar graph, uh, there was no relationship between the incidence of um, cytokine release syndrome uh, and the dose level uh, being used. Um, only 43% um, of patients uh, received supportive tocilizumab and 21% of patients uh, received um, additional steroids. In terms of efficacy, uh, what we can see here is that uh, responses were seen 
across the board uh, at all dose levels um, uh, studied. Uh, the overall response rate for the study as a whole uh, was um, just over 50%. Um, and um, at the higher dose levels, the 200 to 800 milligram dose levels, uh, the, over, uh, the objective response rate was um, 75% uh, with um, more than half of patients achieving a VGPR, uh, including some patients who achieved uh, complete responses uh, or stringent complete responses. And there uh, were some patients on the study uh, who achieved minimal residual disease negativity. Um, we see here from the swimmer's lane plot uh, that uh, responses tend to deepen over time and that the majority of the patients on this study are still on ongoing therapy. So to conclude, early deep and durable responses are observed with Regeneron 5458 in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma who are at least triple refractory to prior treatment. The overall response rate uh, at the higher dose levels studied was 75%. Um, the majority of patients at those dose levels achieved um, uh, a VGPR or better. Uh, and in fact, 86% of patients across the entire, uh, I'm sorry, 86% of responders across the entire study um, uh, achieved a VGPR or better. Um, the estimated duration of response um, has not been reached. And there's a high likelihood that that um, duration of response will be over eight months in length. Um, Regeneron 5458 shows an acceptable and manageable safety and tolerability profile. Um, maximal tolerated dose was not reached, um, and cytokine release syndrome occurred in uh, a total of 38% of patients, with the majority of them being grade one and only a couple of grade two events, uh, typically within um, the first um, two weeks of therapy. Uh, with this uh, promising efficacy and manageable safety profile in patients with um, heavily pretreated myeloma. Um, uh, our data supports further development as monotherapy, uh, and there is a uh, phase two portion of the study ongoing, studying two different higher dose levels uh, as part of an expansion study. Thank you.